Oh, hello. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a gathered puff. So let's get started. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel and my new series called Fabric Witchcraft. Yes, that's right. We are going to be casting some spells, brewing some potions, and uh, it's going to be fabulous. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do what's called a gathered puff. This is a really cool technique that can actually um, be reversible. So you can either use the back side or the top side, and um, I am so excited to share it with you today. If you like these videos and you would like to see more of them, make sure you subscribe to the channel and like and comment below. Without further ado, I need my magic wand. Let's cast some spells. Okay, so the materials used in this video are obviously our silk shantung. We've got some, a pencil, rulers, pinking shears, we're gonna be using some thread scissors, cotton thread, and a needle, wax for our thread, and then finally, um, I'm gonna be adding some rhinestones at the end of the video. So I've got my rhinestones here, uh, a piece of stabilizer for the glue, and then I will probably just use, this needle is about on its way out, so I'll probably use the needle to apply our gem tack. All right, let's jump in to how to prep for this stitch. I started by marking an 18 by 18 inch square on my fabric. Later I actually trimmed this down because I realized 18 inches by 18 inches is quite a big sample for this technique. Okay, so to prep the fabric, I just drew on a grid. This is a little bit different than the last video because it's a little bit more um, like math and stuff. Um, and I actually learned a fun trick. I don't know if you can see in this corner. In that corner, in that corner, I don't know if you can see. So I actually taped down the edges and I don't know why I've never thought of it before, but it basically kept my fabric to my mat so that I could just follow all of the grid lines on there. Super easy, wow, I've never done it before. Okay, how I'm going to do this is basically starting from this top corner up here that I know you guys can see on camera. <laughs> we're gonna work our way in one and two. So we're gonna go like that and I'm just gonna draw a circle. So now we're gonna skip this one. We're gonna go over to this one and we're gonna draw. So these are basically, we're creating squares. Cause what's gonna happen is these little circles that I'm drawing, we're gonna actually gather those into puffs and that's gonna create the, uh, the, the grid that we want. I actually think I should do it a little bit bigger but I mean, I guess two inches, like if I take that down. No, we'll do it this way. This will be great. And now that my fabric looks something like alien markings, I think we're ready to uh, start this stitch. So I cut 36 inches of um, thread. I'm going to wax it and thread my needle on one end and tie a knot off on the other. So working about a half an inch away from our circle, I'm just gonna be doing a running stitch around the circle area to kind of create, to prep for our gather. So I'm going to sew about every quarter inch or so, and we're gonna to try to stay, like I said, a half away, a half an inch away from our circle. I kind of drew the circles just so it would be vis like visually pop for the um, for the point of the tutorial. But if I were doing this on like a bigger project, I would ooh, I would probably only um, do a dot. Like I would measure and place dots where I wanted these versus um, like circles and grid. I just found that um, doing a tutorial um, visually this is easier to see. At least I hope it's easier to see. Otherwise I just, you know, wasted a lot of, <laughs> a lot of time prepping this fabric for y'all. 
And again, we're going for um, what's called a, run a running stitch. So we are just going in and down to our fabric about, I'm doing a quarter of an inch. Um, depending on how big the puffs are, you could even do a half an inch. If you're going for even smaller puffs than what I'm doing, you could do something like, uh, you know, like something smaller, but I think a quarter of an inch is pretty good for this piece here. All right, so we've basically made it back to our piece, right? So we've made it back to our first knot. So now we're going to pull and gather. And we want to basically have a nice, a nice puff made, if you can kind of see. Um, and something that I, I have learned is that you can, what's great about silk is you can actually, if you really wanted to, um, you can manipulate the fabric with your own fingers. So if I want this to create a nice little bridge to this one here, which we will sew next, I can just start by prepping that by just pinching it with my fingers. And then I'm also now gonna pick my needle end up and we are going to sew through this puff. We're gonna go straight through it from kind of the, the edge that we were on. And we're gonna sew straight through it like so and back through it the other way. And this is gonna help us kind of sec secure the puff in place like that. And then we're gonna come around to this other, like basically opposite end and just sew through it this way. So you see, I'm going through it this way. We just went through it like that. And now we're gonna go through it perpendicular. Is that the right word? Yeah. So that it intersects with itself, but on the other edge. So like this. And then one more time back the way that we just came through it. Again, we're just, these are just stitches to kind of to get it to, um, wee, to kind of get our puff to stay where we want it to. And also just, you know, because this thread will be seen if you do this on your project, I'm using white thread so that you can physically see it. I would use a thread that matches this if I uh, was doing this for a piece and you could see the thread. So now that we have come through uh, and created our little puff right here, this guy, we are just gonna find a loop that we've already done. So we're gonna find another piece of thread, which we've got two right here, and we're just gonna take and create a loop and then oopsies there we go sorry we're gonna tie it off and you could do two of these you could wrap your thread through it twice when you have one loop so if you wanted to you could go one two and just tie her off and now we will tie it like that all right, let's uh, let's move on to our next one. I, I just I cheated slightly by pinching all of these so that it would. And then another thing that I did when I was actually sewing this is I considered while I was stitching. So we're we're gonna be putting our first stitch in here. While I was sewing my gather stitch around the piece, I made sure that I had a stitch through all of these lines. Now, if you're not gonna do the grid method when you actually go and do this on your own project, um, it, it might be a little bit more difficult, but if you actually plan to have a gather stitch where you know you're going to be, um, where you're gonna wanna gather your piece, it might help create this little, I'm calling it a bridge. I don't technically know the word for this. This is part of, for me, the design and why I chose it specifically is because I like the combination of this puff with the bridge, the way it creates a grid like this. Um, but again, like you could be using this for the flip side, which I'll show you when it's all done, what it kind of looks like on the opposite side. Um, but again, we're just doing, um, a nice like one quarter of an inch uh, running stitch. 
Um, a running stitch is essentially uh, just one straight stitch. You're not going backwards. You're not going to the side. You're not like loop de looing through like anything. You are just literally running your needle through the fabric, top and bottom, and out the other side. And I apologize that I am moving my fabric so much. It's really just for the sake of you guys getting to kind of see and understand what I'm doing. But once I get going on this, it'll, I'll probably just kind of, um, also for comfort, um, I'll probably just kind of just go to town on it once I get comfortable with this positioning. And then let's, let's help create our bridge, right? We, we want this to, to make a little box and we're just gonna pull. If you were doing this with a lot more too, like a lot more fabric, um, it would be kind of like wise maybe to pull and then keep going um, or to double thread your needle, but with something so small, I'm not really gonna be um, hyper concerned over the, uh, the stitch so much. So you can kind of see it forming here. And now we're just gonna go through our puff like so. And back. Look at that. gonna tie it off same way we did the last one one and I'm gonna do a second just because I'm you know crazy Three hours later. All right, so let's just quickly take a second to rhinestone these. And I have an entire video on rhinestoning and what kind of stones I use, etc. Um, but for this video, I'm just gonna show you real quick. We'll, I'll, show, I'll, I'll do the first couple and then we'll, um, We'll just kind of do a time lapse for the rest because I'm sure this video would get real long, real, real long. All right, so I've put some of my gem tack, gem tack, there you are, onto this uh, spare piece of stabilizer. I've started actually recycling a lot of my stabilizer, putting it into um, like a stash pile for the purpose of this exactly, for rhinestoning. So, See what I'm about to do here, my stones. I have these um, really cool rainbow colored rhinestones that I got on a whim. They have no project in mind, but I thought they'd look great with this. So I'm literally gonna dab just a bit of glue on there. 
place our rhinestone on. The cool thing about placing these on top of the puffs is because they're already a raised space, they're just gonna kind of have a lot more opportunity to sparkle. That'll dry clear, so we'll be fine, but you know, we have to look at it for the rest of this video. Ugh. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, but can I be any courtier? Like, let's be real, this is fun. And when everyone responded to um, like the name of the, this idea, I was like, ooh, how, how, how cheesy can I get with this? Cause y'all know I'm a girl that likes my cheese with a side of cheese. So uh, I was like, we're gonna, we're gonna wear a witch hat. We're gonna be a little witchy. Maybe I'll have different witch themes. Who knows? But I just wanted to have fun with it, you know? Like spooky season is just around the corner. Whoever said that like spooky season can't be spooky summer as well. Y'all know I hate the heat. So here I am trying to summon us some fall goodness. Um, but if you liked this video and you liked this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. Give it, give it two, well, I don't know if you can do that, but give it a thumbs up, share it, comment below, subscribe to my channel. Um, I l release a fabric witchcraft video every Wednesday. And without further ado, have a, I already said that. Um, and now go off into the world and perform your own fabric witchcraft and tag me on Instagram, okay? I don't know why I went into that voice. That's, you know, just, I think if I was a witch, I would talk like that. With the, you know, the, anyway. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Happy sewing. Ah.